Hey there class, uh, this is some uh, additional video material that you can watch um, as an optional supplement to uh, class 3 or class 4 depending on how you look at it. So I got a couple questions from students about uh, the class 3 homework and so what I thought I would do is um, give you a video lecture to homework problem number 1. Okay, I'm only going to do number one. You guys can figure out the others, and if uh, you have questions, you can ask those. But let me just go through class number one's homework um, here in this slide, and you can try to follow along. If you haven't done the homework yet, um, don't just watch this. Try it on your own. Um, there's no way that just watching me do the homework is going to help you learn as much as you struggling through it. Okay. So in homework number one, I have um, a jurisdiction or a provision with two jurisdictions. So I'm going to do the state provision first, okay, and that's California. So I will start with my step one, which is my current. And in my current calc, I'm going to start with PBT of two million, and uh, I have meals and entertainment expenses of fifty thousand dollars before the fifty percent haircut. So that means I need to add back twenty-five thousand. There's tax depreciation in excess of book of 150,000, so that's a deduction. And there are bad debt reserves of 20,000, which is allowing me a deduction because the bad debt reserve is going down. Taxable income is 1,855,000, and the tax rate is 40, or sorry, 9%. I'm getting jumping ahead to federal here. Okay, so for state purposes, the tax rate is 9%. Okay. So uh, 9% of 1855 is 166,950. So our journal entry, we're going to have a credit to payable of 166,950. Okay, that's step one. Step two is to look at deferreds, and I have two deferred tax items in the current year. Both are deductions on the current calculation, which means that they will, they will serve to be credits in the deferred calculation. So what I mean by that is the sum of those is 170,000, and the depreciation difference of 150, when that reverses, it will mean that we have uh, greater tax in income in the future because we're going to have less tax depreciation. And with the bad debt reserve, we had already built up, I mean, the assumption was we'd already built up a, a $50,000 deductible temporary difference, and that's coming down now because we're writing off those receivables. So <clears throat> um, both of those are going the same direction. So seven, uh, 170000 times 9% is... Um, I believe it's 15.3. Let me just ch check. So 170 times 0 0.09, that's 15.3. Okay. So that means that during the year, we had a change in our deferred tax balance of 15.3. So we will credit DTA, DTL. We're not going to worry about separation at the moment of 15.3. Okay, so my balancing entry... Right, that's step two. My balancing entry then is going to be to provision. And if I do the math on that, it's 181, 182, 250, if I did the math right. Okay, okay. so that is my state provision. All right, moving on to my federal provision. So I have federal on this page. Okay, from a federal perspective, uh, typically the only difference in our current calculation in these examples is the fact that for federal, we get a deduction for state taxes. Um, but that's not the case here because we're, we're assuming our jurisdiction is California. And in California, to the extent to you pay taxes in one year, you don't get to deduct them until the subsequent year. So when I do step one and I do our current calculation, I'm actually going to begin with the same taxable income that I already computed on a prior slide of 1855 because I'm assuming that this year is kind of my first year. I know that's a little goofy given my bad debt reserve example, but 
I'm assuming I don't have state tax deductions from prior years, and that um, this year I don't I don't get anything. If I didn't pay any state tax in the prior year, there would be no federal deduction this year. Okay, so if I take 1855 times 40 percent, that's going to be 742. So that would mean I need to credit my payable by 742. Yep. Um, step two, from a deferred perspective, so I know from the prior slide that if I'm trying to compute my change in deferreds, I had 150 of difference that was creating more of a taxable temporary difference. I had bad debts where my deductible temporary difference from prior years was coming down. So that's a credit to the balance. It's, I'm reducing a, a deductible temporary difference. And now here's where things get a little trickier. Um, I have two more items. Both of them are state tax related, even though they're, they're federal temp differences. The first one is my state deduction, right? So I was just saying a few minutes ago that if you uh, are in California, any taxes you pay this year will be deductible next year. So that means that the 166950 that I computed as a current expense last year, right, this number right here, that state tax that I pay in year one, that'll be deductible in year two. And that's why I'm going to set up my federal deductible difference as a future deduction, but not a current deduction. Okay, so that's one temporary difference I've got to add. And then the second is the Fed effect of state. And remember that I said anytime you have state deferred taxes, in this example we have 15.3 of deferred liabilities, when you pay that 15.3, you're going to get a federal deduction in the following year. So that means that when we go to our federal deferreds, we've got to put a 15-3 federal deduction in here because that means in the future when we pay our state deferred tax liabilities, we're going to get a federal deduction. Okay? All right, so let me do some math on this. This is uh, getting up there with the numbers. So 170. Um, 166,950 and 15,3. Okay, so that's 12,250 of net deductible differences. Okay, so multiplied by my tax rate of 40%, that's a $4,900 change in my deferreds. So I'm going to debit my DTA by 4,900, which means that my provision has got to be the delta, and that is going to be provision of 737,100, if I did the math right, okay? And that's our balancing entry for federal purposes. Okay, so if I um, summarize, if I come up with my total provision, that is going to be my federal expense that I just said was 737100 okay, plus my California provision, which two slides ago I said was um, 182 250. So that's 350 and 9 and 1 and 9. So it's 919, 350. And if I'm going to do a rate rec, I'm going to start with my 2 million of PBT. And because I expected a 40% rate for federal, that was my assumption. I would have an 800,000 provision that I would expect, but I ended up with 919,350. 
right? So if I want to explain that, right, I know that I have state tax of the 182 250. There should be a Fed effective state. So 182 250 times 0.4 would be 72,900. A little confusing because I'm using this 40% rate as opposed to 35. So there's a 72,9 benefit. And then there's meals and entertainment, which was 25,000 times 40% or 10,000. So if I add that up, so if I add up my 800 um, plus my 182.250 minus my 72.9 plus my 10, I get 919.350. Okay, that's my total provision. So this is very similar to the problems we've been doing in class. The, um, the difference is this lag method causes you to not take a benefit for your state taxes that you pay currently. It, it causes you not to benefit that in your current federal deduction, but instead stick a benefit in your federal calculations. And so when you look at this, um, hold on a second, when you look at the um, 72.9 in here, right, all of that benefit is effectively in your deferred because none of that 182.5, even though you pay some of it currently, none of it is currently deductible for federal. The entire federal benefit is captured in these two numbers right here. So if you were to take the sum of both of those and multiply it times 40%, that would be 72.9. That would be that number. And so all you're doing at the end of the day is saying, in the future, I'm going to have two federal effects because of state taxes. And so the net entry is nothing to your payable. There is no step one federal effect of state yet. But there are deferred effects, and then the provision benefit falls out. Okay? So uh, lag method, a little confusing. Um, you know, you'll see companies that deduct their state taxes for federal purposes both on a current and a lag, so sometimes the uh, reality will be you have some of both. Um, but, you know, the purpose of the exercise is to get you comfortable with the uh, mechanics. Okay, so that's homework number uh, one, uh, homework exercise number one for class three. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Okay, bye.